again, Christ Greenfield family. Welcome back to our Live Simply Conversations. Thanks so much for joining us today. We are honored that you are here. We have had four great episodes thus far already about living simply here at Christ Greenfield. And this episode wraps up our season one. So go back and watch those that you haven't yet. Today, I am joined by Lee Bauer, who this week will be pulling back the curtain on what it looks like to serve at Christ Greenfield. And later on, we're also going to get to hear from Renee Bennett, who will share her testimony of serving also here at Christ Greenfield. So you're in for a treat today. But before we dive into our topic, Lee, recognize this is our season finale. So we have to leave the audience with some kind of cliffhanger, right? Some kind of yes. catch for, for season two, whenever that is. Um, oh, no pressure, Ed. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> well, thanks for joining today. And, and actually, before we get into uh, the topic, would you mind sharing with us a little bit about your story and, and also your role at Christ Greenfield? Maybe uh, even how serving became a passion of yours. Absolutely. Well, um, so my actual degrees are in German, um, which have absolutely nothing to do with the price of tea in China. Except um, for our German my, speaking colleagues who come to church, right? There has to be a of few. Of course, and, and the middle school boys that I taught. So that, Very that's good. true. Um, but my background actually is mainly in hospitality. So I've worked for hotels. I've worked for the Convention and Visitors Bureau. I've worked as an assistant director of an international association and then did a weird 360 where I became a, an educational facility planner. Hmm. So I never, ever thought that all my gifts, every last one of them would be used at Christ Greenfield. Um, Right now, I'm what's called the campus director. I don't know what that means. It means that I ask the campus to do something and it does it. I don't know. But I'm kind of in charge of the facilities. I'm in charge of the Sunday, what happens on Sundays and our larger events and things at the, at the church. Um, and that's about it. So the one thing I'm really passionate about, when I first um, got two jobs, actually, two part-time jobs. At um, I, I decided that I wanted to work at something that was meaningful. And I thought, oh, okay, I'll, I'll go to church at Christ Greenfield, and they had two 10-hour two jobs available. And so I said, oh, I can do them both, and they, they bought it. Um, and I, I, one of them was volunteer coordinator. And I, I have spent years, like I think many of us have, in the mode of, we need help for this, we need help for that, calling out and screaming for help. Well, I've, I've come to realize over the last couple of years that what's really important is developing people. Mm -hmm. It takes longer, but discovering their gifts, developing them, getting them into small serving roles, and then raising them up if they're ready or want to lead a ministry. So that's what I'm really, really, really passionate about right now. That's awesome. And actually, you've started yeah. answering the, the next question, which we've asked each of the interviewees in this series, which is, tell us in your own words about the Live Simply discipleship journey. Well, to me, the... I, I actually thought about this, and I was thinking, you know, in our world today, it's like a whirlwind. Nobody has time. Younger people don't have time. You've got your kids. You're taking them to sports and so on and so forth. Older people might say, okay, I've done my time. Well, I don't know. What does that mean, that you're in jail and you're doing your time? Um, but, but there are a lot of things outside of our control, and there are three things that are pretty much within our control. One of those is worship. Mm -hmm. So going to worship on a consistent basis, getting filled, letting God speak to us through the means of grace, um, joining a small group where not only do we get filled, but we give back to those within our group. And then the third one that is the least talked about, but really, really important is serving. And serving is um, something that, uh, well, we were not just asked 
to do it. We were modeled, Jesus modeled. Jesus was the greatest servant of all, and he modeled it for us. And we are told that we are to serve. Um, when you put others' needs in front of you, um, it's amazing what comes back to you. Yeah. It comes back to you tenfold. So, Yeah, that's great. Yep, that's awesome. And I think, um, and you mentioned it's such a critical part of the Live Simply discipleship journey because worship is great and small groups is great, but uh, giving back and whether that's uh, directly just yourself or maybe your family or even your entire small group, giving back and serving is is such a critical part of this journey. And and maybe uh, while we're on the topic of serving, being, uh, as you mentioned, a vital call as a believer uh, and should be really in all areas of our life. But what does serving look like specifically uh, at Christ Greenfield? Um, okay, to backtrack a little bit, just I forgot something on the simple journey mm-hmm. um, and serving. All of those things, those three things are designed to keep you in community mm-hmm. with other believers, to keep you, um, they support you. So you get supported by your small group. You get, even when you're serving, you get supported. <laughs> so um, what it looks like at Christ Greenfield is, is very simple. And it, if we consistently worship, right? So every, every week we go to worship and it's consistent. Mm-hmm. And many of us are consistently in a small group. Then getting and giving, you know, um, then I, I kind of think that consistently serving is a very important thing. And it has to be important um, to Jesus. I mean, if Jesus was willing to spend his entire time on earth before he was rose again um, in serving, and in even the biggest sacrifice of all mm-hmm. was to die right Mm -hmm. then um by us going to worship on a sunday and spending an hour serving is is like nothing so service on a sunday is is probably one of the best ways to get into the consistency of serving um i always think of it as if what if i were coming to this campus for the first time Mm -hmm. what would i see Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we were recently voted best of of Gilbert in in a church. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean that somebody's on the campus and are you greeted at the courtyard? Well, yes, yeah, sometimes you are. We have some greeters, not for every service, but we do have some greeters that just says hi. And the whole thing about that is your scene. Yeah. It's really important to be seen, whether somebody knows you or not, to acknowledge somebody's presence. So it would be a greeter at the courtyard. And then in the middle of the courtyard, you've got the welcome desk. Here's a secret that you probably didn't know. Um, on our website, there's a button for somebody who's maybe surfing and looking for a church to go to. It's called Plan Your Visit. Mm-hmm. And they can click that button and I get a notice. So they've already been seen. Um, now we do have some automatic emails they get from me, but I get that and I know their name and I'm looking for them. So um, if they come up to the welcome desk, I'll go, are you blah, blah, Joe Blow? And they're like, I am. And I'm, like, well, I'm so glad you're here. They're seen, we're happy. Um, the other people that I have at the welcome desk, they're doing the same thing. But the ushers that are ushering people either into the worship center or the life center. Those are really important people. Um, the other thing I know I'm droning on <laughs> is it's probably right. going, oh my gosh, she thought she wouldn't have anything to say and now look at her go. <laughs> uh, so the other thing that I think about on Sundays are for our people that are um, here, what if, what if one Sunday you go in and you're supposed to have communion I mean, does anybody think about how that communion gets there? Who bakes the bread? Mm-hmm. Who 
prepares it and puts it either on the altar or in front of the life center. Who mm -hmm. does that? Well, hey, we have people that bake bread. We have people that will come in on a weekly basis and get the wine poured and get it all set out and get it up on the altar. What if um, in the traditional service, say the 730 service, what if you went in there one time and none of the candles were lit? Mm -hmm. I can tell you that if none of the candles were lit, then the oil fillers didn't do their job. <laughs> and sometimes I've had people tell me that some of the candles are lit, but the other candles aren't. And trust me, people tell you. So people notice it. They notice it things when they're not there. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. What if um, we have people that help midweek? We have people that come in and count your offerings. Um, we have people that take attendance. Mm -hmm. So those cards that you turn in or the digital things you do, those are really important yeah. because they let us know where in the simple discipleship journey you are. And if you're coming to church, regularly it's like oh my gosh that button's gonna light up you yeah. know you're you're worshiping regularly um what if on a sunday i know i'm doing right what if on a sunday this is the horror of all horrors what if there was no coffee mm. well that would be just like and there have been a couple of times when we haven't had people to help do that so but the beauty of serving on a Sunday is the more people you have doing it, it's like go to church for an hour, serve for an hour. Right. Boom, you're done. Um, and and what you get back is wonderful. What else can you serve? You can serve at large events like Harvest Fest. Oh, man, that's a wonderful place for people to serve. And yep. you, it. Um, you can serve at the Mesa or the table. Do I have time to tell a short Tempe or La Mesa story? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's a, it's a wonderful service for our homeless community or, or those who are just yes. down on their, our, their life at the moment and they need a, a, a free meal and they get a, a home cooked meal and they get to stick around for a worship service to sing and to hear a great message. And, and we we usually get uh, between hundred and 120 people attend at uh, on Tuesdays, and I know they've just gotten started in Tempe on Thursdays, and uh, it, it's a great place to come out. You can cook, uh, you can be part of the music team, you can be part of the setup and takedown team. Uh, so if you're if you're busy on Sundays, uh, Tuesday night or a Thursday night is also available too. Yeah. Well, here's a cool story about La Mesa. Way back when when we first started it, so we all have different callings, and I have never felt called. To, to go to that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. But people, I was curious about it. And people would come back. And I'll be honest, it was kind of a mixture of people that were serving. It was probably a lot of uh, older people that initially started out. And I'd ask them, I'd go, well, tell me about it. Tell me, tell me what it was like. And, and without exception, all of them said, it's kind of hard to describe, but I can say this. I'm getting more out of it than I'm giving. Yeah. Bingo, yeah. bingo, bingo. That is it. Yeah. When you serve other people, whether it's filling a candle or whatever it is, it's be, being fulfilled and, and doing something outside of yourself. Yeah, that's right. That's and, right. and getting back more than you're giving. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, that's... It's, it's a beautiful thing. Cool. And Lee, it's awesome to see your passion. Uh, and, and I'm sure you have a multitude more of examples to share with us. But can you, can you pick an example of someone who's, who had a transformative experience during their time serving at, at Christ Greenfield? Okay, I can name lots of names. I'm going to do two. And one okay. of them is our other guest. But the first right. one... Um, recently passed away, 
Um, her name was Ricky Wilhelm, mm. and Ricky had had kind of a she was she was raised within a church, and I believe she was raised in the Lutheran Church. Mm -hmm. um, but she had had kind of a hard life, so some drugs and stuff like that, and divorces. And um, a friend brought her to Christ Greenfield um, years ago and said, "You'll love this church." the most interesting thing. So she's in this in her 70s. She didn't have a whole lot of money. Very, very frugal. Um, but what she did was she joined a journey. Okay, that's the first thing. And I, I don't think they're reconvening. I, it was pre-COVID. She mm -hmm. joined a small group. She started serving at our Harvest Fest. Mm -hmm. And then she and I were talking one Sunday. And I said, well, you know, we'd love to have you at the welcome. And, she and I, I said to her a couple of times, I said, I'm so glad that you're coming to this. And she looked at me and can't even say it without tearing up. And yeah. she said, I can't even tell you how important this church is to me. Yeah. I can't even tell you how much I get from it. And to me, that is transforming. We were the rock that she yeah. could hold on. Amen. Renee Bennett is a little different, and it's on. She's recently transferred from another church, and um, very quickly when she first came, um, Jack Kellerberg and I talked to her because we saw the light of Christ shining through her, and we talked to her and we said, "Hey, would you be interested in doing this, this, or this?" Mm -hmm. she said, I came from another church where I was doing a lot of stuff. I'm going to let Jesus guide me now. And he's guided her. Boy, has he guided her. So I, hmm. I think that she can probably tell her own. That's so great. Renee, welcome to the show. Thank you so much Hi, for guys. being with us. Oh, I'm so... I'm just grateful to be here. Um, this is <laughs> Lee. What are you doing? <laughs> She's giving you the Jeopardy theme, like you're supposed to. I, you have a thought. time frame. <laughs> that's what I thought. Um, so it, it's interesting when I think about um, how I landed at Christ Greenfield, how we, our family, landed at Christ Greenfield. Uh, I've been in ministry for 27 years. My um, start into ministry was um, not a way that I would ever suggest anyone do. I was nine months pregnant, and the pastor walked to the back of the church, locked the door, and said, no one is leaving until I get a youth leader. <laughs> I had to pee, and I got really scared, and I raised my hand, <laughs> and that is how it all started. So since then, I have been a youth leader, youth director, DCE. I have been a Stephen Ministry coordinator, uh, organized pretty much any kind of event um, that went on, uh, led Bible studies, etc. cetera. Um, very, very um, blessed to be able to be bivocational and then also just be employed just by the church. Uh, we had an Abraham moment 18 years ago where we moved from Connecticut to Arizona, uh, totally listened to God, and uh, we found a church home, and that church was our home for 16 years. Mm. We, um, we experienced something that I, I really likened to a divorce. It was so incredibly painful, but uh, we started to recognize that um, the gospel was not being shared with us. And uh, there was a social agenda that was heartbreaking. And so um, through a lot of prayer and discussion, we left. And God brought us to Christ Greenfield. I mean, he absolutely brought us. Uh, but I had a lot of fear. Yeah. I went in to see Pastor Tim like week two. And this was right before COVID. Our, our timing was impeccable. We, we are really good with our timing. I went in and I introduced myself to Pastor Tim and kind of explained a little bit of my story. And I said, I'm really scared. I have a bag here and I'm not going to unpack it until I'm sure that what I'm hearing 
is the gospel. Mm. I have to tell you that the next Sunday when we went to church, I actually felt like John the Baptist in Elizabeth's womb. Like I was <laughs> leaping for joy. Like, are you kidding me? And I, I mean, I would love to say that I then took that leap and leapt into uh, just being active and everything, but that's not true. I then proceeded to meet with Lee. Um, I, I really, <laughs> it, it's funny because I, I know um, the devil was in my doubt. He, he was really playing upon my fears. Um, I always was the type of person to do baptism by full immersion, but this time I would just wanted to stick my toe in. So I met with Lee. I said, you know, tell me what Christ Greenfield's all about. You know, how can I help? And then I backed up and I said, but I, I really don't want to get too involved. I want, I want to, um, you know, I want to dabble. And so the first thing that Lee had said to me was, uh, you know, you can dabble. Just try different ministries. That was such a blessing mm. because it, it allowed me to address my fear. Mm. Uh, it allowed me to be introduced to so many wonderful ministries at Christ Greenfield. I was introduced to the prayer ministry. I was then invited to be a part of the Catalyst leadership team, which was uh, just life-changing. And then I became a volunteer at Financial Peace University at La Mesa. And then Lee asked me, she did a lot of shoulder tapping. She's very good at that. Uh, but I was blessed to then work with her and Tanya on the Discover team, uh, just kind of developing what that would look like to help more people discover and develop their gifts and then deploy them. Uh, then we did another shoulder tap and I ended up teaching the Discover class. Nice. <laughs> it was funny how she worked that out. Um, my husband and I went to a couples retreat, and I met uh, Rachel Bredo, and uh, she had had some discussions about my background. I said, "No, nope, you know, I, I, I am not going to get involved in youth ministry. I'm not feeling that God's calling me to do that." And then a couple months later, I ended up teaching. <laughs> sex, dating, and relating to the parents and youth. So there, there's a common thread here that um, despite my, um, my fear, um, Christ Greenfield has just allowed me to um, feel so at home. And it's really because um, there's, there's truth in the word that is spoken every single week. And that has allowed me to know that I really am where I'm supposed to be. And it's helped me to discover just so many different areas um, where God can use our gifts because our gifts are not for us. It's for others. Right. And I have been able to to regain that joy that I yeah. really was not sure I'd ever be able to have again by serving. And I I can't even tell you how grateful I am. That is a testimony of how God works in mysterious ways and takes us on journeys of uh, mountains and valleys, and if you trust in Him, He will provide. And uh, where you sit today is is uh, just a loving testimony of that. Um, maybe a question for both of you: If if I'm watching right now and I'm still kind of on the fence about serving, right? And for various reasons, people don't want to get too sucked in. People don't want to do something that's not meaningful. They don't, you know, whatever the reason is. And and we don't judge, but. Um, what can you say to maybe calm their nerves and be comfortable about stepping forward? Well, I'll for tell that you what I know. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to well, say, what well, just... <laughs> <laughs> what, just... what I tell people is what I told you. Um, I truly believe that if you're going to serve and you're going to stick your toe in and you don't like where you stuck your toe in, you can stick your toe in someplace else. You do not, it's not a, you have to do it forever. But I will say this, yeah, great. we are called to serve. And we're called to serve not just when we're young, not just when we're middle-aged, but up until Jesus calls us home. We are called to do that. And one last thing, we are the church and we are the plan B. 
and, and we we are the plan B. We are the church. Mm -hmm. forever and ever. And, and we can talk to do that. Plus, the Holy Spirit, when you're doing what you're called to do, the Holy Spirit that dwells inside you is doing the happy dance. And you feel that happy dance. And and you you're happy. So I'm done. Renee? <laughs> now that you know what it's you're exactly right uh retirement does not exist in the bible um you know i retired from youth ministry no i didn't uh, <laughs> um the lord just laughs at us uh he has us exactly where he wants us to be for a time such as this book of esther all the way and yeah. uh you know i honestly um if I was even talking to you guys two months ago, I would have thought you were kidding me if I would have said I was going for my MDiv. Well, now I'm going for my MDiv. I mean, the, the gifts and, and the joy just keep coming. Um, you know, we're not um, deeds-based. We know that our righteousness comes from the Lord. But because he loves us, that's why we serve others. And uh, I have never been a part of a church family that just so embraced discovering people's giftedness. Uh, what do you like to do? Uh, how can we develop your passion? Uh, that's what makes Christ Greenfield yeah. an amazing home. Amen. Just take that one small step and there is a multitude of different directions you can go and, and you can switch at any time and uh, we are just thankful to have all the incredible people in our community who do give a lot of time serving in, in many different ways. And uh, I've never been part of a, a community that has had so many different opportunities and, and yeah. uh, a variety of things seven days a week uh, that you can give to from from uh, helping the eldest to the least and little and or littlest of these uh, is an opportunity to serve. So it's very cool. Well, Lee and Renee, thank you so much for being on today. And friends, we just hope you have enjoyed these Live Simply conversations. Uh, this is the end of season one, but we hope to be back for more exciting content uh, in the coming year. So thank stay you. tuned. Thank you again. Peace be with you all. Thanks, guys.